Hello everyone and welcome back to the Stratagoy channel. We're back with another video, this time on everyone's favorite horse boys, the Dawn Riders. As per usual, we start this guide off with the War Scroll and their abilities. We'll analyze what their impact is when you include them in your army, how you can use them optimally and finally we'll seal the deal with some tips and tricks. If you know your Venari Elves, you can see right away that the Dawn Rider profile is a bit different from their counterparts on foot. Obviously it has a much greater movement of 14 inches, which is amazing, even in cavalry terms. Every Dawn Rider has 2 wounds, a 4 plus save and 7 bravery, which is one better than Sentinels and Wardens. As for the weapons, we see the usual numbers return. Interestingly though, the Dawn Rider champion is armed with both a sword and a lance, and he uses both when fighting. The main damage should still come from some metal lances via mortal wounds, but everyone who's ever used cavalry in war games before knows that mounts always outperform the riders when they shouldn't. Do note that the lances have a range of 2 inches, so you'll be able to hit in two ranks with them most of the time. As with all things Lumineth, the good stuff is hidden in their abilities, rather than in profiles. Like all Venari units, Dawn Riders can form a shining company. When all models touch at least two other bases in the same unit, they're basically in a special formation that makes them harder to hit. They're also less maneuverable though, so they can't run nor charge and they can only pile in one inch. For Dawn Riders, it's especially important to know when to deploy as a Shining Company and when not to. We'll cover this in the Basic Tactics section. What makes Dawn Riders special is their Deathly Furrows ability. This basically grants them more attacks on all their melee weapons, depending on which unit you target. If you choose to gain one attack, you can only target one or two wound model units, without a mount. If they only have one wound and no mount, you can gain two attacks. This makes Dawn Riders quite alright as horde killers, but bad against everything else. Without this ability, their damage output is somewhat neglectable. So if you really want to kill something, choose your fights carefully. Pick a small unit that's fragile and usually on small bases and ride them down. Whatever you fight though, try to fight it when you made the charge move. When you have done so, their lances gain plus one to wound and one extra rend. Those same lances have tips made from sun metal and have been charged with the energies of Hish. For each hit roll of an unmodified 6, they inflict a mortal wound instead of rolling for normal damage. Even with their full bonus for deathly furrows, that's still only 15 attacks on a 5 man sized unit. This is less than you're guaranteed to get on a unit of 10 Wardens, so choose your fights carefully when using these guys in combat. Your Steed Master can help you out a little bit though. He's a wizard as long as this unit has 3 models. He can cast an Unbind 1 spell and knows the Power of Hish spell. Power of Hish improves your Sun Metal weapons. Instead of mortal wounding your enemies on unmodified 6s, you inflict mortal wounds on a hit roll of 5. On their best day that means 5 mortal wounds on average, on their worst that's only 1.5, so nothing extraordinary there. Considering what we've just learned about the Dawn Riders and their average damage outputs, I really can't see them as a reliable hammer unit. At best, you can use them to thin out hordes, but usually they'll end up being a screen or capturing objectives. Before doing any of that though, you can choose to make them battle line. For each warden unit you have, you can make one Dawn Rider unit battle line. Since you'll usually have one of these knights in your army, it could help you fill your minimum requirement. If you had a choice though, I would try to avoid making them battle line. You'll usually run these in front of your force and they will die to almost anything, giving your opponent an easy battle tactic that way. As stated before, you'll usually end up using these as a screen for your more efficient units. They fulfill this role very well though, maybe even better than anything else in our army, as they have big bases and you only need a unit of 5 for an effective screen. 
When you buff them up with Aether Quartz, Mystic Shield and All Out Defense, they might even survive what's charging them, as they'll be on a 3 plus save, ignoring Ren 2. Not bad, right? If you're adamant about killing stuff with them, your only chance of reliably doing so is when targeting hordes or low wound models. Think of zombies, gits, grots, those kind of fodder and tarpet units. Since all their weapon profiles go up by 2 if you're targeting 1 wound models, you're looking at quite a lot of attacks from a 5 model unit. 4 sword attacks, 15 lances and 20 hoof attacks. The problem is though, that that's the most optimal amount you'll probably gonna get. Due to the restrictiveness of the coherency rules, there's little point in running units larger than 5 models. Considering that the current meta consists of monsters and elite models, likely even on mounts, we have to accept that Dawn Riders cannot be regarded as a consistent damage dealer. What they excel at though, is speed. Not only are they very quick for a standard cavalry unit, but having the option of speed of ish opens them up to race car levels. A small unit that can be good at zoning and screening and has a move of 28 inches after spellcasting, yes please. For this flexibility alone, I would always include at least one Dawn Rider unit in your army. After you know what role you're going to give them, you need to put them in your list and then on a table. Let's find out how we do that most efficiently. As for nations, there are some standouts. Emetrica is not one of them though. As ever, this nation is only beneficial to Alarith units and doesn't make Venari units shine at all. Sire's a better pick yet again. You can basically never go wrong with double quartz for more survivability or more speed or that extra sweet cast just when you need it to, right? Liatha scores lower than usual, as Dawn Riders hardly benefit from its bonuses. They have no use for better leadership anyway, when they're only a unit of 5 and have rerolls with their standard bearer. Rerolling once to hit is fine, but we're not using the Dawn Riders for damage, so nothing major there either. You're better off with Zytrek. The plus one to cast is nice, since you can almost guarantee cheap spells like Speed of Fish. Or you could go for Alumnia. This time around, I actually like Alumnia more. Thanks to the pregame move, you can start zoning out your opponent before the battle's even started. Or you could place them on an objective for an early secure. Contrary to the earlier videos, I see no point in using Helen for this specific unit. Dawn Riders benefit a little from the after combat move, but in my experience, they don't really need it that much. Or rather, there will be units in your army that need it more than your leftover unit of Dawn Riders. Now let's look at spells. Unless there's nothing better to cast, I actually don't end up casting Power of Hish that often. I know, shocker! Speed of Fish is just so good on them, that I have them cast it more often than not. Mind you, they don't necessarily have to cast it on themselves. You could cast it on your Wardens and have them move up quicker. That way, your Wardens have a chance to cast Power of Fish for themselves. Total Eclipse and Lambent Light might actually be useful as well, depending on your own list and your opponents. Since you'll be moving the Dawn Riders up anyway, they are easy to get in range of hostile units. Lastly, I'd like to remind you that you can also cast Mystic Shield and Arcane Bolt with your Dawn Riders. Both equally fine choices. As for deployments, when in doubt, deploy them in Shining Company. You can always break them out later, and the only thing you'll have lost is a run move. Since Dawn Riders are already so fast, you'll hardly ever need that anyway. Keep your Steedmaster in front as well, since you'll want his sword to be in range when you eventually find yourself in combat. Specifically for Dawn Riders, I wanted to highlight their zoning and screening potential. In both cases, you want to spread them out as far as possible. That usually means breaking Shining Company and leaving 1 inch gaps between each base. 
When zoning enemies out of objective zones, make sure you keep your enemies outside of 6 inches of the objective. If you move your Dawn Riders on that fine line where they are still within 6, then your opponent will definitely be out. Even if they end up dying that turn, you'll have deprived your opponent from scoring that objective for at least one turn. For screening, it's almost exactly the same deal. Spread out, apply some defensive buffs like Mystic Shield if you think you have a chance of survival, and check the distance to the units that you're screening. You obviously want them outside of 3 inches to avoid enemy pile-ins, but might want them within 6 inches if they're a ranged unit that can definitely unleash a decent unleash hell. A great example for this would be Sentinels. Now that we've covered the basics, we'll tie three small tricks to them, and you'll be good to go to wage war with our shiny horsemen. The first one's the Dawn Rider Bolt. It is very simple, really. Dawn Riders can actually be pretty good sniper units. Cast Arcane Bolt with your Steed Master, charge, fire the Arcane Bolt, kill the character with your remaining attacks. Statistically, this will kill most minor 5 wound characters, but only if they have low armor saves. The next one is a surprise capture, and it's not so much a trick as it is a reminder of how fast Dawn Riders can be. As stated before, with Speed of Hish, you can move them up to 28 inches. In Alumnia, you could make a pre-game move and even run a charge if you wanted to. So if you'd go all out there, you're looking at a 48 inch move at max. That's pretty good, right? The last trick you might actually remember from our Sentinels video, where we highlighted the use of Lament Light. We suggested doing this trick with a Lord Regent, but it works just as well with Dawn Riders. Make a pre-game move with Alumnia to get in range with your horsemen. Cast Lament Light and then move them 14 inches back in your own movement phase. The good thing about doing this with a Dawn Rider unit rather than a Lord Regent is that Dawn Riders are more dispensable. You could trade this unit for a great shooting phase any day of the week. While you might want to think twice about that with a Lord Regent. And that brings us to the end of this in depth guide on the Lumineth Dawn Riders. As always, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed our content. We put a lot of effort into it and I enjoy reading all your feedback and comments. So please do like, share and subscribe. It really helps me out and keeps me motivated to make more of these. Also feel free to let me know on what other units you want to guide on. I'm curious to find out. I will see you in the next one.